So in 2 Samuel chapter 11, this is what we read. Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and on his will. And they destroyed the sins of the sons of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. So we already see in, in chapter 11 that David is already not where he is supposed to be. He's not where he's supposed to be. And here's the thing, guys. A lot of times when you're not where you're supposed to be, that's when a lot of things happen. And then he saw her. He took her. He laid with her. And then what happened? She became pregnant. And so a lot of people over there are like, oh, man, you know what? That's bad. But the story doesn't end there. David ends up losing that baby. That baby dies. And David mourned. When we give up something, some of us react differently. We lose something, we react, we react differently. Some of you guys have had great losses in your life. You lost family members. Some of you have no home to go to. Some of you are going through some really hard things in your life and you're willing to give up anything to have something better. And it was anger. It wasn't even really any sadness in his voice. It was just anger. He's like, don't I deserve better? Don't I deserve something? Don't I deserve a family to love me? Don't I deserve that? And so there's this, this part of him that he was willing to give up almost anything to get something better. Get to a point in our lives where we let our brokenness become something that makes us so angry and we're going to blame everybody around us. I did it. I did it. I let, I let the thing of, of my past, I, I let that loss make me so angry. And I, and I blamed God. I blamed everybody. I blamed anybody and anybody. Because if you heard him at the end, he says, I'm still worthy. I think sometimes we, we look at our lives and we look at all the things that happen and we think that we're not worthy of God's love. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I was there. I was at that point in my life, I'm going, God, I'm not worthy of your love. I'm not worthy to be loved by you. I don't deserve it. Some of you are angry. You're angry at God. You're angry at your parents. You're angry at the world. You're angry at... And then others of you, you're just so broken, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to pick yourself up anymore. You don't know how to pick yourself up anymore. Yes, you can, Weston, do it. And you're standing there, you're going, ah, I just don't know how. I can't do this. I can't do this. And that scene that they didn't show, the mom said, the mom's talking to him and says something basically to the effect of, we all fail at being the man that we think we're supposed to be, or we thought we were supposed to be. We fail. It's what we do after when we already become the man. Or the woman. How do you react? How do you deal with it? I love how she said that. This is the map that tells us where we're going. And this is the map that shows us where we've been. And some of you, and it's a very true statement, because when you look into someone's eyes or you look in their face, you can see the pain, you can see the hurt, you can see what they've gone through. You may not know exactly what they've gone through, but I guarantee you, you look and you go, man, I know they've been through something. So where's your heart taking you? Have you ever thought about that? Where's this map taking you? Did you let this map become so corroded and so beat up that you're angry? Or you just don't know how to pick yourself up? Or are you willing to say, okay, God, I'm going to let you draw my map? Let's bow our heads. Abba. Sometimes the pain is more than we can bear. And when I think of young people, I know that there's so much they were never ever supposed to go through. I know that there's many of them here, Abba, who, who, man, they, they, they were never supposed to experience that loss. They were never supposed to experience that pain. They were never supposed to experience innocence stripped away from them. 
that we're never supposed to experience that. But God, what I've learned through the pain, what I've learned through the shame, what I've learned through the fear is that you're still on your throne. You still love us. And only you can heal us. God, this week's not done. And you're not done. Some of us here, we're ready to go home. Others aren't quite ready to go home. I'm telling you what I'm ready for, God. I'm ready for a mighty move of God. I'm ready for you to do something awesome and great here. And I know you've already been moving in some people's hearts. You've already been moving in some people's lives. You've already been touching them. And Lord, some of them will leave here not experiencing that. But for those who do, God, I just pray that it won't just be an experience here, but it's something that they take with them when they leave. For those who are broken hearted, God, who are angry at you, angry at the world, angry at their parents, I pray that you would start to touch their hearts, start to reveal yourself more and more to them. For those of them who just can't seem to get up, that they're, they're busy being stuck on the ground and they just can't get up. They don't know how to do it. They feel like they're, they're in the deepest pit of their life. Throw them a rope. I know you're going to do something great. And you might be able to pray. Amen.